Halifax's Gary Sowerby is a four-time world record holder for long-distance driving. He's actually driven around the world not once but twice. And now he's written a book about his many driving adventures. And Gary Sowerby joins me on the phone this afternoon to tell us more about his remarkable life thus far. Gary, good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon, and I'm not in a car. I'm at my desk. <laughs> Are you back in Halifax now? Back in Halifax, yep. We were up in the Yukon over the weekend, and now we got back uh, yesterday. Did you drive or did you fly? Well, we flew up, but what we did up there was sort of the first uh, phase of we're doing a the launch of this book. There's a story in there called 7-Eleven Way to Go, and it's how 7s and 11s have haunted me my whole life. So uh. we decided to launch this book by going to seven oddball places in the world and doing a book launch. So the first one was a drive from uh, Whitehorse to Dawson City on Friday the 13th, which was, uh, there's a story in the book about doing that very thing 13 years ago, and okay. we had all kinds of bad luck. And so we tried to do it and get some good luck last week. Excellent. And where's your next stop? Well, we don't know. Actually, there's, there, there may be something coming up in two weeks, uh, but we've got 11 months to do this, and we're just going to have some fun with it. Okay. Well, you, how did you get going? I remember covering the story when you first day, uh, you and uh, uh, Ken Langley. Did Ken I get Langley, his, yeah. yeah. Uh, went on your, I think you are in a Volvo, if I'm not mistaken, went on your first around-the-world drive. That was back in 1980, and it was a Halifax-built Volvo, and we... We broke the around-the-world speed record, and uh, we took a month off the record, and the folks at the Guinness Book of Records were so impressed with what we went through to get in their book that they made us and that Halifax-built Volvo the front cover worldwide in 1982 of the Guinness Book of Records, which was nice for to see the big Canadian flag front and center there because the whole door is a Canadian flag. It was nice to put a Halifax bolt up you, there. Yeah, indeed. You've driven uh, from one end of Africa to the other. You've driven, uh, I like the way you describe it, around the block in a week to celebrate the fall of the Berlin Wall, the block being the uh, the eastern block, the former communist countries in, in Europe. And, and, and i got to tell us a story about Ralph the Pelican. <laughs> Ralph the Pelican. Well, as you might remember, there uh, it was two or three years ago that when Hurricane Juan came through and uh, there was a stranded pelican on the uh, roof of Ralph's uh, pub over there. Yeah, Ralph's Strip Club. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, the uh, Faith for Hope, or the Hope for Wildlife people got a hold of it and uh, they needed to get it back to its natural habitat and they, they couldn't fly it. So, uh, and this habitat was in Florida, right? It was in North Carolina. North Carolina, right, yeah. okay. So we had to get it down there. So I went out and I bought a, 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 a GMC safari van, a big G van, like, you know, the contractors would use. Yeah. And we made a birdcage in the back, and the Faith and I uh, jumped in the truck, and we hauled that pelican down to... Uh, to North Carolina. A 2,671-kilometer trip. How long did it take you? That was three. We did a night in Fredericton. We we, we left uh, Ralph in a, in a detailing shop at the General Motors dealer there because he needed to spray him down every night. And then we spent another night at a at a horse hospital in New York. And the third night was just in a uh, Holiday Inn that was pet friendly. And I smuggled him in. Or Faith <laughs> smuggled him in. They didn't, they didn't say we couldn't have a pelican. <laughs> well, if it's pet friendly, who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah really. Uh, how did Ralph handle the trip? I mean, was he was he active in the back of the van there? Was he noisy? Uh, how did he make out? Or actually, well, you know, I shouldn't I say he. Because because Faith was in the, 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 she was behind me in the car, so I was alone up there. But I never, I couldn't see him because we had a, a partition between him and me. But uh, you know, we had a, a cameraman from CBS or NBC or something in for a while, and I said, "What's he doing back there when I'm driving?" And we had a log for him, and he looked like a surfer dude. He was keeping the balance on that log, and I said, he's got to have the strongest legs of any pelican in the world after 1,400 kilometers of that. Wow, and we should point out that Ralph was not a he after all. He was, Ralph was a she. That's the first thing he said when he got down to that. That's a female, so Ralph wasn't looking to go to the Ralph. The, the pelican wasn't looking to go to Ralph. It was looking for a job at Ralph. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, Alana tweeted this question. Have you ever received a speeding ticket? Well, you know, I've had tickets, but in all of those world records I set, I never got a speeding ticket. Really? Because, because those were not, those are about planning. And the thing is, if you speed and you get caught and you're in Colombia or you're in Pakistan or in, in some strange place, you could get quite a delay. So the idea is to speed a little bit, maybe, you know, five, eight percent. 
but the whole thing is about the plan, how to get through the borders, how to how to uh, uh, just just you can cover a lot of territory at the speed limit. I'm sure. Is there any one country in particular that stood out in your mind as having horrific road conditions, or did the driving conditions are just so bad that you couldn't believe you were on the roads? Well, in 1984, bringing that GMC Suburban up through Africa, uh, Kenny and I hit a washboard road coming out of uh, Zambia, and I thought the truck was going to come apart. It was, you know, we ended up having to drive about oh, 90 kilometers an hour to see if we could get the truck above the bumps. And I said to Kenny, I said, geez, how long is this road like this? And he said, well, from my estimation, it looks like about 1,100 kilometers. Yikes. <laughs> so that road was like that all the way up through Zambia and then all the way across Tanzania up to uh, uh, up to the Kenyan border. That, that was, I think, the worst road. Well, your book is about driving and uh, the many adventures you've been on, but well, my question to you is what drives you to do this? Well, I don't know. We got, what, what drove us, we, we did the Around the World thing in 1980, and the idea was to go back to our jobs. And uh, but we came back. We owed the banks 120 grand on something that cost 400 thousand. <laughs> so we did the Africa Arctic thing in the suburban to try to make enough money off that through advertising residuals. Which see that second project was all financed out of the states. Yeah, yeah. And we had a and 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 it worked because Firestone Tires ran a 2.6 million dollar ad campaign and we got five percent of it and that paid off the round the world trip. So by the time I finished the second one, well then, if you looked at the Guinness Book of Records at the time, there was one more long distance, and that was the Americas, and uh, I went and did that in 97 with uh, Rolling Stone editor Tim Cahill. Wow. Uh, is there any one story in this book that you really like that really stands out? I mean, I'm looking at, uh, I'm just it's, it's chock full of, of all kinds of really neat stories. Well, there's a good one about my mother, about how she scammed my twin brother into thinking there was a... Uh, an old car of his that Peter Fonda wanted to use it in a film. That's a funny story that we get good feedback on. There's uh, there's one about coming through Nicaragua and, uh, and getting not allowed into the country and what they did to me, how they scared the daylights out of me. The drunk command post, command post of the commander has yeah. watch in my pocket, the guys with the guns on us. Anyway, they're all neat little stories, and I have written about 350 of them, and what we did is we put 50 of them in this book and uh it was my 65th birthday and we said well let's just put these in this book and see what happens so we're uh, pretty proud of it it's a great book it's called driven mind uh, by gary sowerby and uh, again some great stories about your many travels to many different have you how many countries have you been to gary do you have you counted them right around 100 something like that wow. 98 or 100 and are you going in any, any more adventures at all or are you have you decided to pack your bags and stay at home now well, the night up in Bombay Peggy's and drinking the Sour Toe cocktail last Friday, that was a nice little adventure, a little homegrown one. Uh, there's a story in the book that talks about my logo, which is five arrows. And the idea is when I got five of them turned to gold, I would retire. Well, I got four of them. Oh, well. So, so I don't know what the last one is, but I know one thing. I won't chase the clock on some kind of a drive. I'll do a drive, but it'll be... I'll be chasing something else other than the clock. All right. Well, listen, I'll look forward to you telling us what that might be when the time comes. And, Gary, thank you for joining us here. for. Okay. And, and the book, you can get the book on our website, adventuredrive.ca, or they've got some out at Chapters there at Bears, uh, at Bears Lake Out a Chapter Store. All right. It's called Driven Mind by Gary Sowerby. Thanks, Gary. Okay, thanks. Have a good one, bud. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. Gary Sowerby. Uh, I guess the best way to describe him is...